Witchlings, and welcome to Circle Chat. I am Morgana Braid, aka Victoria Wilder, um, aka Maiden Circle, Covenant Academy. And um, this is just a little video series in which I talk about various things in my practice. Um, as an ongoing thing for me, I really try to understand why I practice certain things, kind of like um, why I believe certain things. Um, just kind of trying to go back throughout, like, my past and my history and the things that I've taught myself um, and that I've learned from other people and just trying to figure out, you know, why I believe certain things, what they do for my life and um, <clears throat> just kind of what the basics of my practice are, I suppose. So today, instead of just necessarily digging so deep as I, I have been, I did want to talk about something that is important to my practice, but maybe isn't necessarily something everyone needs, but it is something most new witches that I know of like, and that is the altar. So I know of the altar from a Wiccan standpoint, so most of what I'm going to say has to do with Wicca, um, but I've also developed my altar in a very personal way. So hopefully this um, connects with some people. The way I do my altar, the way I think of altars is not um, universal. So how you have your altar might be entirely different. Some people have multiple altars. I used to have like two. Um, now I'm down to just the one, but I used to have a small um, deity altar that was basically just for the god and goddess imagery. And now I have, and I have my general altar, which is the one I'm down to now. And that's mainly just a space issue. I live in a studio, so I don't really have that much space for multiple altars. Um, I could try to make the space, but I just haven't really been able to get around to that yet. There's a lot of stuff that we have that we are still figuring out what to do with. In any case, today I wanted to talk about my own altar and show it to you. But first, let's talk about what the altar is. So I'm not going to go into the real history of it because like I said before, these aren't really scripted. So I didn't do like a ton of um, pre-planning for this video. I would just tell you what I've learned. Um, growing up, I've always learned that Wiccans have an altar, and in general, it's a space where you can pray, you can worship, you can place any of your spiritual items on, um, and you can just have it kind of as a spiritual focal point. In many religions, the altar is a place where um, you have to go and kneel and pray at, where you can light candles to make your, your pleas, make um, uh, make petitions and things like that in some religions. The altar is a place where you honor your ancestors. So you'll have like an, an ancestor altar where you have pictures of them and maybe things that they wrote or things that belong to them and just anything that you can to honor those people who came before you. There are also, like I mentioned, the deity altars, which are specifically meant to represent either a specific god or goddess or just the general um, idea of god and goddess, which is what I tend to do. I'm not very, um, I don't really deal with specific gods and goddesses that often there are very very few that I um, understand on a deeper level and that I've worked with but otherwise I tend to just be very general with god um, and goddess feminine masculine energy because that is what I believe um, the way I believe it is when I am doing spiritual work and spell work unless there's a specific deity for me that I have to work with then I believe that the one that's meant to help out with that specific petition or specific specific call, um, they'll find their way to me without me having to narrow down who I'm reaching out to. Obviously, that's not the way for everybody. That's just me. Anyway, um, so there are altars for family or ancestors. There are altars for um, deity or specific gods and goddesses. There are altars just because you want to feel nice. So there are like pretty altars that people set up there. People do altars for the season. So there'll be, you know, um, they'll switch it up every season. They're There'd be like symbols for fall, symbols for spring, winter, summer. I almost forgot what the what winter was for a second, and my brain just like blanked it out. But um, yeah, there there will be symbols for fall, winter, spring, summer, and um, you'd switch them out at the changing of the seasons during either the solstice or the equinox. And you would have like, for instance, in a winter altar, you could have like snowflakes and like little images of snowmen and um, pine needles. So a lot of people, like if you're taking things from nature, you could have pine needles, you can have a jar of melted snow water so that that's like your winter altar and your winter holy water. Um, in the spring, you might have something like sunflowers or very like seasonal fruits sitting on your, on your altar 
kind of old. Um, you might have um, abundance things because spring is when there's new growth, new birth. So you might have like symbols to represent that. You may have like bunny rabbits, which represent fertility. Um, on a summer altar, you would have a lot of the similar things, but then you, you could have summer images. You could have like um, a little bit of lemonade in a jar, or you could have like um, a picture of people at the beach, or you could have beach sand or seashells or something like that. Um, for the fall, you could have fallen leaves, acorns, pumpkin, squash, like all of those things that represent each season that just make you feel like the season. You could have like, I don't know, pumpkin spice in a little, in a little tiny jar for the fall. Um, anything that just kind of represents the seasons for you. In addition to seasonal altars, some people have elemental altars, so you could have an altar that's dedicated to water, earth, air or fire, in which case like with a water altar you would have um, water on it obviously, you might have um, you might have like blue crystals or green stones or anything that looks like it could be in water, you could have like a little fish, like if you have a pet fish you could keep them on your altar for the water altar um, and you know take care of them, feed them, love them, take care of them and so you're consistently putting energy into that. For earth you could have sand, you could have salt, you could have a little bit of dirt, um, you could have even a flower growing, a plant that you have to tend and feed and love, I think you're getting my pattern here, um, something that you're actually putting energy into, that is what makes an altar important, that is what makes an altar alive and energetic and it makes it a spiritual nexus because you're putting consistent energy into it, you're going to it regularly not necessarily every single day. Not everyone has to do that, but you're going to it regularly and putting energy into it. What did we say? We said water, earth. Um, for a fire altar, you could burn candles. Obviously, when you're at home, you don't need a candle burning all the time unless you have that life. Just be really, really careful with fire, obviously, but you can burn a candle every day and that's still tending the fire. That's still feeding the energy of that fire altar. Um, on an air altar, you could have a feather or fan or something that creates wind and you could turn it on every day or you can breathe or fan yourself or blow on your feather, you know, just putting that kind of love and energy into those altars. You could also do all of those elements on a single general altar, which is what I do on my altar. So on my altar, um, like I said, it's pretty general. I have things that represent the elements. I have things that represent the masculine and feminine energy of the goddess. I have stones, I have tarot cards, I have my book of shadows on my altar. I have my divination tools on my altar. My altar is very general and um, I generally think of it more as an altar space. I have like a specific table that is the altar and then I have um, all my other witchy stuff kind of in that corner, so that's my altar space, which I'll show to you in just a minute. But the altar itself, I try not to put anything on it that isn't spirit that isn't related to my spiritual practice. So I'm not going to like put a glass on it when I'm in the middle of drinking. I'm not going to put like a book on it that I'm finished reading that has nothing to do with my 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 pagan practice. You know, I'm not going to just it's not a table. It's not something I can put my keys on when I get home at the end of the day. It is something specifically for my practice and for things that are related to my practice. So I am going to switch over to my other camera and then we are are going to take a look at my altar space. Okay, so this is my altar corner. This is where I do much of my spiritual work. Quite often just on the floor right here. Um, this plant is usually hanging up, but I take her down to water her and keep her um, out of the air conditioner. So this is my, let's start with my shelf. Hopefully this camera looks okay and sounds okay. It's a new camera that I got for very cheap on Wish tell if it actually looks as HD as they claim it is. But this is my shelf. Usually I will have my tarot cards here, but as you may have noticed, I'm already set up for a reading um, at my desk. On my shelf, I will also have my singing bowl here, and uh, you can see my herbs. So this is, these are just jars that I got at a dollar store. I have lavender, mugwort, damiano, yogurt, uh, yogurt, haha, <laughs> mugwort, fumatory. Um, this is some black salt that I made. It's about time I make some more. This is some anointing oil that I made. I have a batch of it inside of my altar. This is my, uh, black mirror. Okay. It's my scrying mirror. Those are my books.
I have a lot of digital books on my computer as well, but those are my physical books, the ones that I've kept. This is my altar. Okay. I have behind the altar. So I have this Beltane one that I made with a friend. Um, a prosperity packet. My personal favorite rune, Pertho. Um, I have corn dolls that we just made at, um, was it Lisa? Lunasa? We just made at Lamas and Lunasa, I believe that's when we made these. Um, then I have a few more wands that I made, some clay wands, a sun wand, a crystal wand, and a wooden wand that I got a few years back, like five years or so. My angel that I found, some stones. A pomegranate that I just got at a Maven event that I am offering up. And some candles, of course. So, on to the actual altar. Let's talk about the actual elements of an altar. Like I said before, you can have all the elements, um, earth, air, fire, and water, on your altar represented. So, here I have a shell filled with salt. Because I love the sea, I love the ocean, so a lot of my symbolism in my life tends to come down to this. This is also one of the first time from one of the first times ever, possibly the first time I ever ate oysters. Um, so this is an actual, actually an oyster shell filled with salt. And then I have this stone that looks like it belongs in a um, fish tank. Looks like water to me, so it represents water. I actually got this at medieval times, like six or seven years ago. And this has become my symbol of water ever since. I also have um, an element of fire. So I have this pack, plain pack of matches. There's nothing on it. So there's nothing um, other than the fire that it represents. Um, and I've had that for I don't know how long either. It's actually a little dirty, a little dusty. Um, and then I have this purple ribbon that I've had for a while as well. Ribbon makes me think of floaty, makes me think of light, airy energy. So, of course, the ribbon represents air. I just got this feather in the UK. Um, so I picked this when we were in, in um, Scotland, actually. And, yeah, I brought it home and it has taken its place as also representing air for me because feathers, birds, flying, air, all makes sense, right? Also, on my altar, I do have a representation of a specific deity. I know I said I don't really work with them very often, and I don't, but I do have a love in my heart for the Greeks, and this is Athena, the goddess Athena, owl on her lap, and another feather. Um, owls are very important to me. I love them. I think they're beautiful. I think they are wise. They remind me always to stop and think. They are also dark, and they can be deadly if yeah, but they can also be, like, the cutest things in the world. If you've ever seen baby owls, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, I have a little bit of Bacardi here just as an offering to the gods. Um, just something to to give in thanks for all that I have been given in my life. I have a symbol to represent the god, the masculine energy. And this actually was given to me by a guy I used to date or see or whatever. A guy that was in my life, he gave it to me, and it's like one of, it's so beautiful, and it found its way to my altar. I have this beautiful glass here to represent the feminine energy. It's got some salt water moments, some blessed water. And this is an antique glass that I actually got from my grandmother after she passed away. Um, it was one of the only things I took out of her house after she was gone, and naturally it represents the goddess, the feminine deity. This is some more blessed oil that I've made. It's a different recipe. It's basically just lavender oil um, and a carrier, um, whereas this anointing has like a bunch more in it. It has like a bunch of herbs in it, as you can see. <clears throat> so I have my anointing oil for blessing things, or this oil for blessing myself. And this oil for blessing, bell work, um, and all kinds of other stuff. It's a heavier oil. And that's, those are the 
basic elements of my altar, okay? So those are the basic elements you'll find on most altars. You'll find the elements, you'll find some representation of deity, you might find an offering, and you might find some sort of blessed oil. And of course, you're probably going to find a candle of some sort. So this is just my basic deity goddess blessing candle. So this is a candle to represent the light of the goddess in my home and I have every day until it's gone and then I replace it with another one or tea candles or something. Right behind here I have my goddess statue. You can kind of see that she broke. I um, actually dropped this angel on her while cleaning up one day and she broke. Her arms broke and I hot glued her back together because I love her. I am considering retiring her but not. I'm not there yet. I'm not ready to let her go. So there are images of deity and offering and the elements. Some of the other things I like to add to my are my book of shadows here. So this is my book of shadows. Um, so whenever I open this book, I'm not going to open it at this moment, or I'll, I'll, I'm not going to open it at this moment, but whenever I do, I generally have these the first um, five pages. So in those first five pages, I have the Witch's Creed, the Wiccan Read, the Charge of the Goddess, and Evocation, and an invocation that I wrote. Um, and so whenever I open my books, I sit down and I read those either out loud or to myself, depending on whether I'm alone or not. And um, that's just kind of a promise I made to myself to to make sure I'm putting energy into my book and into my sure I'm reminding myself of the reasons I'm doing things and to remind myself of the importance of my book of shadows. Um, that it holds my beliefs, that it holds my truths, that it holds things that are important to me on a spiritual level. Um, so that is another thing that I consider an offering, that I give that time of um, from myself, that I spend that time and I read and I learn these texts and I understand these texts um, because I am dedicated to my path. I also have tools of divination here. So this is a pendulum board. I actually don't use this board as much as I used to. Um, but I did, I, it is obviously homemade and I made it with this ring. This ring I also got from my grandmother. My, um, niece actually got it out of her house after she died and then gave it to me. Um, so this ring I've used to make a pendulum and it works pretty well. It's really, um, it's really in tune, I think, to me and to my energy. This is when I read. Um, and I use this for a little bit more general things. So sometimes if I'm doing a card reading, I'll be like, which deck do I need to look at? And it'll let me know, yes or no. Um, if I need a quick answer, I'll me a lot of the time for that because this one is basically for this board. This one is just kind of a general. I have some grounding magnet stones. So these are hematite magnets. Uh, these I use when I'm meditating. I use them to ground myself. I use them if I'm feeling pain. I will sometimes just hold these on the spot where I'm feeling pain, and that helps to relieve it. Um, I will also sometimes do that with my bloodstone, depending on is like if it's um, that time of the month, then bloodstone is a wonderful way to. I'll just hold it on my pelvis to help with the pain there. And yeah, that is my altar. So that is the top of my altar, but I do also have. It has innards, you guys, so I will keep certain things inside of it. Um, and they're not like, I'm not super private with my practice in case you haven't noticed. So I'm not like hiding things from you. The only reason I didn't open those is because I don't want to sit here and read out all those texts to you. Um, but like in here, I just have a bunch of stuff. This is a, a spell box, so there's something going on in there. This is another magical mirror that I also use for scrying and other witchcraft. I have incense in here. I have a bunch of candles, a bunch of uh, smoke cleansing bundles. Um, I have little bottles. This is my anointing oil. The, the mother batch. Can you see that? So this is the mother batch for what's in there. <clears throat> and then underneath, I have a little more stuff. I have my cauldron for burning. Um, for, I have like my leftover salt empty bottles. So this is more like stir storage of um, other like extra stuff, like just not stuff that I necessarily will use right now in, in in ritual, but stuff that I need to store specifically with my ritual. And I also have my old book of shadows in here. So everything that's in here is also in here. Um, so usually what I'll do is I'll handwrite things 
and I'll put them in here and then I'll print a copy and that copy goes into the other one. Okay, so that just kind of keeps it neat and also keeps this connected to main circle and also because the other one sometimes has more private things. All right, so that's pretty much all of my altar. Um, just to quick recap, again, you could have just about anything that matters to you. I have some spell work on my altar right now. So this is um, a spell that's kind of in process. And um, I have my symbols for the elements. I have some offerings here in my altar space. I have candles, wands, all of my spiritual things, my guardians, my deity representation, um, my cards in this area, all of my spiritual witchy things. So not only is this an altar, but it is also an... It's a sacred space. It's a space where I can come and I can do my work. I can do my craft and, you know, just kind of feel that I'm in it, feel that I'm protected. And I try to keep my whole house um, spiritual. I try to cleanse the whole place. I mean, like I said before, um, it's a studio, so we don't have a lot of space. But I do trust what we do have and, and honor it and, and be grateful for it and respect and love the whole place, not just my, my, my altar space. Um, but this is where I would come when I'm doing any kind of witchcraft, any kind of magic. Okay, that was my altar. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you maybe got some inspiration from it to build your own altars. Like I said, you can do an altar for just about anything. You can do it for your ancestors, for your deity, for specific gods and goddesses. You can do it for the elements, for the seasons, for the holidays, for um, just, you know, anything in general. You can do it for loved ones, for children. If you have a child and you want to set up an altar for them, that's something you could do. You can do an altar for just about anything. The main thing is that you're feeding it, that you're spending time at it, that you're 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 creating a spiritual space, and that it's not just like a knickknack drawer, that it's not just holding stuff, but you're actually putting your love, your time, and your energy into it, so that you can um, kind of get that energy back. One of the driving points in my own practice is the feeding, is the putting energy into my work, is the being consistent, being regular, even if I'm not like always doing that on video, I'm always working with my cards, I work with them every day, even if I'm not recording something. Um, I'm putting energy into my tools, and anytime I open my book of shadows, you know, like I, like I said, I tend to read from it from those first few pages every time, that is the promise I made to myself, um, so that I am always honoring that book and always honoring that work. Um, yeah, just keep putting energy into it, keep putting love into it, and if you're not feeling it, then it's okay to switch. It's okay to change your altar. I clean my altar. I change my um, altar cloth a lot. I move things around when I need to, um, when I feel like I need to be, to have a refresher. Um, it is totally okay to change things up and to have a new altar as long as you're putting energy into your practice and into your, into your tools, into your belief, then you're going to get something out of it, okay? So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time for our next circle chat. And um, remember always, always that I love you. Please check out all the links in the description and go take a look at your um, life path numbers, numbers one through um, six should be up by now. Maybe there'll be more since this is coming up on Friday and I'm recording this quite a bit in advance. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Again, remember always that I love you. Bye.